Hello, my name is Scott McClellan and I'm with Plant Moran Group Benefit Advisors. I'm going to be discussing the 90-day waiting period limitation associated with health care reform. For plan years beginning on or after January 1st of 2014, group health plans, generally speaking self-funded plans, or health insurance issuers, generally speaking fully insured health plans, are not allowed to apply waiting periods that exceed 90 days. This provision applies to all health plans those that have maintained their grandfathered status and those that have lost their grandfathered status. A waiting period is defined as the amount of time that must pass with respect to an individual, either an employee or a dependent, before the individual is eligible to be covered for benefits under the terms of the plan. For this purpose, eligibility means having met the plan's substantive eligibility requirements, such as being in an eligible job classification or achieving job-related licensure requirements as specified in the plan's terms. Eligibility conditions that are based solely on the lapse of a time period are permissible for no more than 90 days. Other conditions for eligibility are generally permissible unless the condition is designed to avoid compliance with the 90-day waiting period limitation. So, as long as the employee can elect coverage, that would begin no later than the 91st day of being eligible, the 90-day waiting period limitation is considered satisfied. Additionally, a plan sponsor or issuer will not be considered to have violated the 90-day limitation merely because an employee takes additional time to elect coverage. So, if an employer requires an employee make an election before coverage goes into effect, and the employee takes additional time to make their election, then the extra time that the employee takes to make their election does not count against the employer, or in other words, the employer will not be considered to violate the limitation. If an employer decides to take advantage of the safe harbor guidance in terms of determining whether or not a new variable hour employee is a full-time employee, then the employer can apply the 90-day waiting period after the measurement period as long as coverage is made effective no later than 13 months from the employee start date. If the employee start date is not the first of the month, then the employer can measure the 13 months from the beginning of the first of the month following the start date. Let's look at an example. In this slide, you can see that employee Y is hired on February 15th of 2014. His employer uses a 12-month initial measurement period to determine the full-time status of variable hour employees. Employee Y works an average of 30 hours per week during his initial measurement period of February 15, 2014 through February 14, 2015, and is therefore considered a full-time employee. His employer can use a waiting period that is no longer than 13 months from his start date plus the remaining time until the first day of the next calendar month. Therefore, if employee Y's effective date of coverage is on or before April 1st of 2015, the employer is considered compliant with this provision. I hope this overview provided clarity regarding the 90-day waiting period. Thank you and have a great day.